let's uh, start it. Let me introduce first. Okay. <laughs> and then you start it. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, uh, we are very happy to have all distinguished speakers. Uh, Imran Lasper. <coughs> um, he has uh, about uh, 20 years of experience in the automotive industry and uh, working for the uh, IT management, service sales, business development. Right now, they are currently focusing on startup company, the name called Next Future Transportation. The, their project is try to shake the uh, automobile manufacturing industry, try to disrupt the uh, transportation business, and also potentially may change our routine life. So, so, could you please speak up? We have people on the phone who can hear. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm finished. <laughs> Okay, then uh, let's welcome uh, uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I want to thank you, IBM, <coughs> for letting me present uh, what we are doing now. And uh, yes, we are trying to change the world of transportation. And uh, the title of the presentation is From, from Dream to, to Reality. So let's start from the press coverage that we had in the last uh, six months, so everyone in the world has been talking about about next, about what we are doing. So we started from a concept, from a rope idea, and this is something that happened uh, two weeks ago, and this is the shake of the Emirates that is introducing. Uh, a billion dollar investment for the self-driving uh, cars and to, to transform the Dubai transportation system to be 25% self-driving uh, for 20, 2030 deadline. And uh, to send the message, he has been using our design, a picture of one of our model. So he has been doing this without asking any authorization or nothing, but uh, <laughs> clearly, the envision in what we're doing, uh, the future of transportation. So this is our mission. So we want to evolve the world of transportation. We want to create um, um, a physical network, not only vehicle to vehicle, but physically connected vehicle to transform the commuting, the journey, to transform how the masses use the road and how the masses move around, around the world. So this is what we want to uh, achieve and this is our driver. So obviously sustainability, efficiency, we don't need any new infrastructure because we, you, we are going on the regular road, so using uh, wheels like a, like a car or a bus. Uh, we want to unlock the self-driving experience for everybody, not only um, private owner of <laughs> Tesla or um, very expensive car. And we want to create a uh, scalable ecosystem of module. And this is a video from the V2, so it was after the V1. <laughs> The whole concept was already here. So on-demand services, on-demand module to commute. This is the first mock-up of the app where you can choose how to, how to commute, how to travel. here was to improve the occupancy rate. And the 
the new feature was to have this this opening in the middle to let people or goods move from one module to another. This was kind of a Pandora space because we discovered that we can deliver services in motion. So this opened uh, the road for a new, uh, brand new market, so on-demand services. For example, you can order your latte. And a Starbucks module could connect, actually connect and deliver the service, <laughs> the product. with a regular bus. was this raised platform that is kind of hard to realize. So all the basics were here. So it's on-demand services and pay as you as you as you use. So the system is completely scalable because at every time you don't need to have a a full bus going around the town, but you only need uh, the number of the module to fill them. So you don't need to have um, 10 huge buses in, uh, when there is no peak time just to move around uh, 20 people. So this is the video of the V3. So this is the last, um, the last design. We completely changed it to make it more feasible. So this, this new design is, is uh, 
completely different. So the, we don't have the race platform anymore, and the model it's more like a small bus. The wheels are covered, and the platform is covering the whole area of the model. So there is much, way much more room inside, and it's technically more easy to build. And I mean, at the end, it's a box, so there is not a very um, highly innovative design. Because it's it's a box, but it's the whole concept that is uh, completely new here. So this is the team. Uh, there's me, Tommaso, who is the inventor of Next. Sri Yaganatan, our CTO, which is here with us today, and. We're gonna answer all the, all, the, all the questions you have later. And Federico who is a vehicle engineer, he's in Italy. <coughs> Dave is a system engineer, he's here in San Jose. And Raman uh, works for um, <coughs> self-driving sensors, and he's here in San Jose too. This is Tommaso, this is what he do. He do. And we'll see this video about his creation. So let's start from the boring <laughs> current issues with transportation. So we have a huge environmental problem now. So we have $175 billion in, fu in fuel cost with the actual transportation system. So I'm talking about only cars. The worldwide or the US number? Uh, so this is the um, the money we could save only in United States if all the cars were Teslas. Okay. This is another uh, 
economic problem, so it's traffic jam. The Bay Area um, is developing so so much in the last last years that uh, the traffic congestion is becoming unsustainable. So, 120. Uh, 121 billion of dollar uh, saved if next could will be adopted. If next was already here, we could save this. That's in addition to 175 billion dollars. Sorry. That's in addition to 175 billion dollars saved. Um. Previous slide. I mean, this is compared with 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 the car. So, if uh, Every, if you transform all the car in electric, this is what you can save right now. And clearly this is in addition because um, if you remove all the taxi, all the buses, how you know, how you know them now, you could save 121 billion with next. So it's in addition. So I'm, talk, I'm talking about under-occupied cars and transit. Then we have a social problem. So it's all the time lost uh, being stuck in traffic or being uh, waiting for mass transit, waiting for a bus arriving or waiting for a me me metro. So this is Morgan Styling telling us it's 422 billion dollar of loss. This case in working hour. And another social problem that now with self-driving car we have single pod, we have the Google car, and this is not enough to solve the problem right now. So there is a very limited comfort and very limited uh, way to interact with other people. So this is a comparison on next compared to what you can have now in a matter of self-driving or single user pod. So we are not like single user pod because the single pod they have to stack together <coughs> and you usually have one to two people on each pod and there is no transfer from one to another. We are not like <coughs> a minibus uh, because the minibus they are absolutely they are not modular so they can carry a small amount of people usually uh, in this case is a 10 easy mile uh, they are um, golf cart transformed to be small buses. We don't need any new infrastructure because we don't need a special, special lane, we don't need uh, um, to go on different, uh, on different roads, so we can use the actual system, the actual transportation system. So these are the solution if next was adopted now. So all these number are about, for example, no charging time. We have an option for uh, swap in motion for the for the battery. So there is a module carrying all the full battery that connects to the module with the empty battery, and it can do a swap of the battery, pushing the module. And uh, with, the, with the adoption of NEXT, we have a 75% um, uh, less traffic based on, th on to the modularity of the module, of the vehicle. And we have um, time, time save, say 90% 90, 90 time save, and uh, this is I'm talking about self-driving and on-demand module. On the bottom, there is a comparison between uh, cars 
and the module, the next module, and the next slide I will show you the difference compared to a bus. So this is the swapping motion battery. So the, the module have a 100 miles range, but they could, be, they could have an infinite range based on onto the swap um, in motion capabilities. <coughs> Are these lithium-ion batteries? Or Sorry? Are these lithium-ion batteries? Yeah, I mean, they are the same kind of battery used by Teslas, but oh. at the end, lithium, yeah, we don't need, uh, uh, we have a huge amount of space for the battery. So How that heavy we can is say one that module? Sorry? How heavy is one module? So one module uh, is like a small SUV. So we are talking about 2.3 tons. Uh, with a maximum of... Not the whole module, the battery module. Oh, the battery. So the battery uh, will take around 15% uh, um, of the weight. Uh, talking about safety, uh, the model has a braced platform. So um, all the battery, all the mechanism, all the motors, they are all beneath uh, the platform where the people are raising. So in case of accident, um, the impact will be onto the machinery. So this is the same uh, case that we have on buses. Buses, they have a raised platform. And uh, hopefully this will never happen because we would like to operate the model in a complete self-driving environment. So everything is controlled. You have to control everything around you. But in any case, uh, the structure beneath the platform will have absorb most of the, of, the, of the contact, of the shock. So yes, as told before, less traffic, more productivity, and a solution for the, for the charging. So if you talk about the mention of Next, uh, it has a length, the length of a smart, but it's large and tall like a regular bus. So here we are still into the dream side of the project. So we are trying to envision Next, our solution, um, in comparison of on what is available now and what will be made uh, and built in, in the next year, I'd say 2020, 2030, smart city and everything. So the common mistake is to envision uh, next in the city as we know now. So as you have, you know that um, the failing part of this is the human part. So the cars driven by human. So when you have to envision uh, this module uh, connecting and disconnecting in the actual road, it's kind of kind of hard to imagine. But if you think about a completely new world, if you think about smart cities, if you think about all the new town that has been built uh, everywhere in the world, where there is a very very low adoption of private car and private transportation, and uh, huge investment to improve the self-driving transportation, for example, Dubai. Uh, clearly, this kind of model um, can be used. Talking about the size of the model, um, this picture is a little bit tricky because you imagine the model to be very small <laughs> and imagine that you're gonna have to stack a lot of people in a very small place. Um, actually, uh, we are building the full-scale prototype, and I can assure you it's a small room on wheel, and uh, it's not about it's not for six people; it's for ten people. So it's six sitting and four standing. Yes. So it's a slice of a bus, if you want. Question: Yes, go ahead. Is it aerodynamic? The shape doesn't. Sorry. Is it aerodynamic? Design so, uh, the shape, like. uh, I'll, sh I'll talk about this later, uh, slide. but anyway, this is the shape of a bus. 
it's not aerodynamic, obviously, it's a box. But you achieve the aerodynamics when you stack more than one model. But the front is not. It's the front is not aerodynamic. It has the same aerodynamics of a, of a bus. Uh, anyway, uh, we are thinking about um, producing um, platoon module, uh, but this is only for the for the long transfer platoon module with an aerodynamic shape. So this is the model we are talking about: the Starbucks model, connecting and delivering coffee to the passenger. And it could be Starbucks, it could be Apple, it could be someone who decides to uh, showcase the product. Let's say you are commuting, you will have to stay 45 minutes on the model to reach your destination. Uh, Apple can just ask the passenger, hey, I'm going to pay your transfer, your commute, if you let me showcase what I'm producing. So you can have the model connecting and then they will show the new laptop, watch, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, this is the social network. So uh, there is a highly personalization possible for this model because as soon as you stack uh, more than one together, um, companies uh, like Google, again, Apple, that now are using, for example, uh, private coach, private buses, and are um, engulfing cities, especially in San Francisco, there's a huge problem with those private buses going around and blocking entire street because they have to move people. In this case, you can uh, personalize um, the model, and you can create your working space inside the model. So highly produ productivity. Uh, we have another solution for goods. So we can have, for example, a uh, UPS model carrying boxes around, carrying box around. And this model, they can connect together. And we have some. Um, robotic rails inside that can move only one box. So you can have a redistribution of box uh, among few models. So there are barcode reader, anything inside, so we can decide um, and move the box that needs to go northbound or southbound. Uh, I've seen that UPS now, they're trying to improve, obviously it's their job, try to improve the software to to find the best way to move the box and to uh, di uh, dispatch what you are, what you have to send in the best possible way. But at the end, I see UPS trucks stopping in parking lot, and physically they have to move the boxes one by one. So they do it. They uh, usually do this uh, at the beginning of the day, um, in the middle of the day, and at the end of the day. So yeah, this is part of our patents. These are the, the moving shelves that actually uh, can move the box from one module to another. So I said before, there is a redistribution of people inside the module. So this is how you, how you can achieve uh, the lower footprint possible. So our competitor is uh, a bus. But a bus, to use it, you need to have the entire bus all the time around to carry people. Uh, doesn't matter if it is uh, peak time of no or no peak time, you always have 40 feet, 12 meter of bus going around. Uh, in our case, the modularity uh, let us decide how many modules you need on each time. So we, you will have more module in a peak time and less module, no peak time. So here we are taking 50 people and uh, we can use 
eight module, one bus, 10 car, assume that all the cars are, are full with five passengers, which is really not the case in the States. Or you can have uh, 50 single user pods. So the footprint, uh, the bus has the best footprint, but the bus is absolutely no modular. And uh, obviously the cost for, for passenger is, uh, is higher in the bus. Because you have to pay for the driver, you have to pay for the bus to going around empty. So municipality has to pay a lot of money and they cannot decide um, the length of the bus. So this is everything we can offer. So driving modularity, open space, uh, and optimization for logistics, the battery swap, and on-demand services, and in motion redistribution of people to improve the occupancy rate. Self-driving car, you only have the self-driving pods, you only have the modularity. With self-driving bus, which are, they are not available yet, uh, you have the self-driving and you have the open space inside, obviously. And the price is completely uh, in a disadvantage for the, for the bus, because the bus are very, very expensive. Uh, the new full electric Proterra bus is uh, $600,000 for one bus. In our case, we would like to sell each model to sell. We'll have to have price for, for each model for $35,000. So it's the same price of the Tesla Model 3. Yeah, you say 50. I mean, $35,000 uh, in a full in a full um, production. Five minutes. Sorry? Five yeah. minutes. Oh, five minutes. So this is a competitor comparison for um, self-driving car, modular pod, and self-driving bus. And this is the cost on the left and the traffic footprint on your right. So, um, Next is the cheaper one, cheaper option, and it has the comparable um, footprint to the self-driving bus, uh, if the self-driving bus is full, obviously. So these are the um, comparison in the rush hour. Uh, we have competitor with self-driving uh, or um, pool share taxi, uh, could be Uber or Lyft, self-driving bus, and next. So the modularity help us in, in every case, so in rush, medium, or low, because if you see next as the full occupancy rate uh, in any case, but you will have, uh, um, based on the modularity, you will have uh, more module or less module. Uh, the self-driving bus you will have each time the full bus here. It doesn't matter if the bus is full or is empty, the bus will still be here compared to a next where you will have only one module to drive around some people. Uh, this is the travel uh, planner app. We have this app um, you can actually use, you can summon the model, but obviously the model is not here yet. And you can choose uh, on how you want to commute and what kind of services you can have. And it, can, it gives you um, a pro projected price on what you are choosing. There's another video here. Next, cloud-based platform is easily accessible as a mobile app. I can select the destination, but I can also select how to travel and minimize the price. Or decide with whom I want to travel. Yes, yes, yes.
and finally decide what services I want to enjoy. So the model with the order service will reach me on the go. The QR code generated is the key to enter the model. Yeah, this is one of the options. You have a QR code, you just show it to the camera of the module, the door will open and you to use the model. <coughs> so here we have the Bay Area case. So now, for example, you have a thousand car uh, driving uh, northbound from Mountain View and you will have a thousand car with one passenger that will actually reach San, Franci San Francisco or def at the end trying to reach San Francisco and you will have to park them and to move them around the town. Um, in our case, let's say that you need to move a thousand people, you will have uh, a thousand or less module picking up people around. Uh, the module will connect onto the 101 during the commute and people will have to move uh, onto the front module to fill them and each person will have to move uh, on a different model based on what area of San Francisco they will have to, to reach. So at the end, uh, we can say that only 10% of the model will actually enter the city. So only with this adoption, you can have a 85% cutoff of the traffic, 85%. And this is the app, and give you distance, trip time, estimated fare for the simple commute. And as said before, this is uh, um, pay as you use. I have a lot of people asking me, if I don't want to move, what happens if I want to stay on my seat? Or um, el 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 elderly people, they don't want to move. Uh, people on wheelchair. It said, it doesn't matter if you want proof or no. Uh, you will reach your destination anyway. Uh, the problem here is that you will probably pay more. And it will take more time to reach the destination just because you didn't move from your, from your, from your seat. So I'm sure that 90% of the people that can move, that can stand up and move, they will probably move because they will pay less and uh, they will reach the, the destination in faster. Um, talking about um, software that take care of the module, um, we are not competing on, for example, with Google for the self-driving software. Now there are a lot of company working on the self-driving software and they are investing billions of dollars on this and we are, we are not a competitor for them. Uh, we are the, the final user, we are their customer. We are the one that want to move masses using uh, not our standard self-driving software but the best self-driving software available. And what we are working on um, in so is on the very specific piece of software that needs uh, to operate our model. In this case, um, these are the algorithms uh, to decide when and where and why our model needs to connect. So in this case, we have um, two models. They are going uh, in two different places. And here there is a software uh, that will um, tell the model, join, connect, and do the commute together. So the first part is the, um, when they are not connected, then the model will cap <coughs> with couple, and then they will disconnect in a certain point. So this is the software trying to find the, uh, the optimal um, timing to connect the model. This is our business strategy. So we have a, 
um, human driving uh, period, which is could be from now, or from the next year, when where you have uh, the module with actually um, a driver inside. So let's say that municipalities um, they want to adopt our system. They don't have to rely on a uh, not legal and not already safe self-driving software. Um, they can decide each time how many modules they want to deploy. So in peak time, they, ha they can have uh, a large number of modules. In no peak time, um, a small amount of modules. And there will be a driver driving the module. Then the module can be um, upgraded with self-driving software. And they can be sell uh, to everyone who can afford to buy a 25,000 25, model. So if you want to be in the transportation business, you don't need to buy a bus. You just need to buy a small module. So you, you can use your model uh, as if it was your car, but and when you're not using, instead of having an asset into your driver, you can f let the model go and it will make money for you. Like you have your personal Uber driver. In 2021, uh, there, there could be a complete self-driving environment uh, in some cities. Uh, at this time, you can adopt on-demand services, services because you are working in a full autonomous driving uh, ecosystem. And there is a large amount of revenue for this because you have all the services. So these are all the business scenarios for, for next. Um, so this is on the public transportation scenarios where we can work with the public transportation agency uh, and we can be the one that uh, take care of the management of the module to move the masses. Then this is a personal scenario where uh, People, normal people can decide to own uh, a module. Um, they can decide to um, create their own RV module. So they can have a module with a, a kitchen, a restroom, and um, bedroom. And then there is a company's scenarios. Uh, again, thinking about Google, Apple, they can have their own private fleet of modules They can decide how to use them, how to personalize them. So next can be, um, can have an operability in all the three scenarios. So these are our clients. We like to start from public transportation, private, and then companies, private companies. So we started from Dream, and this is the reality. So this is the full-scale prototype that I'm building uh, into my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the wheels, everything. And yesterday, from yesterday, we also have a rooftop. And it's four uh, independent suspension and four steering wheels. And in this case, we'll have uh, two motors in the front, and the motors will be inside the model. So this is the this this all. Now we have a um, we filed for an international patent, and uh, these are the the first drawings. So you see the connecting part here, and the battery. Uh, you don't see the battery, these are the battery. And stay on, on the middle of the chassis, so the whole weight is very, it's very low on, on the ground. Um, and they go back from, they go, they can be extracted from the back of the model. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. I hope I've been <laughs> clear enough. <laughs> and please, if you have any question, I'll try to answer with the help of uh, Sridhar, if you <laughs> if you want to intervene. You said earlier in the talk that there wasn't uh, any need for a, a new infrastructure. You're using existing infrastructure. That's not totally true from what you showed us. 
I mean, for your system to be 100% effective, uh, you're going to need dedicated next lanes. You're going to need, sorry? Dedicated lanes for the next pods. I mean, you, 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 you gave the example of 101 going to San Francisco. So imagine you have a train of pods, like six or seven pods, and then you've got three, three or four more coming on. If there's private vehicles in the HOV lanes, you won't be able to connect. Exactly. Well, How do you get around that problem? Let me answer that. Oh, not, not necessary, actually. So if you think about it, a connected set of or uh, next pods is nothing but a bus, right? So when they are together, they are, they are no different than a bus. The length will be approximately the same. But we can also conceive that they could be longer, just like you have multi uh, big trailers that exist on the freeways today. In terms of interconnection, there's no different than two cars actually fishtailing to, to each other and then connecting up. So we actually believe there is no need for additional infrastructure. And, but certainly, uh, dedicated express lanes are coming in many parts of the world where they say this is a specific HOV lane or it's a, a bus only lane, etc. So it would help the next proposition, but it's not required. And the net the aggregate of what we are proposing is that, like Emmanuel said, we have an 85% reduction because the occupancy rate dramatically increases during commute time. And as a consequence, our freeway, freeways will get less congested. So we do not anticipate that as a requirement. Question, uh, say some thousand people from San Jose want to go up north, but they want to get up various places like Sunny Way or Mountain View, Redwood City. Sure. How do you plan on combining all these and exiting and dropping <coughs> their location? I think our uh, solution suggested it, but basically think of it as uh, we have a first mile, middle segment, and a last mile problem, right, in commuting in general. We are all in different houses. We all go to different uh, you know, office uh, environments. But generally, the middle segment, whether it's 280, 101, or whatever freeway of choice in, uh, in your part of the world, is a common part, right? Cars solve for the first and the last mile problem. They are great at getting you out of the house. They are great at getting you to work. But they are horrible in the middle segment. Buses and uh, metros, et cetera, are great for the middle segment, but they are horrible in the ends. What we do is to solve for both. <laughs> So we have a circulating set of next modules in, near in the vicinity of your home. So like he showed, you, you dial up next, it comes by, picks you up, picks your neighbor up. They might, you might be going to different offices, different workplaces, and it doesn't matter whether you're going to Saratoga or Santa Clara or where have you. It'll pick you up, it'll get you to a staging point. In phase one of what we propose, the staging point is a physical place where it'll, you know, just like a rest stop, it'll stage the, the, the accretion of buses. And there will be more circulating modules, but as Emmanuel said, you'll compact the, the bus train that is being formed. That bus train now goes up 101 or 280, and then as it gets towards San Francisco, it starts suggesting, you know, asking you to move to the right module. So move oh. to module two, move to module three, etc. Now each module is yeah. now specific to a location. It goes to the, you know, downtown San Francisco, it goes to Berkeley or wherever you have, right? So that way we have solved for the totality, the optimization of the commute. And at all times, these modules have been filled up to capacity, right? So we have eliminated a ton of traffic in the middle segment, but we have given personalized, customized service at both ends. So assuming the passenger will move from uh, module to module. Yeah, but uh, think of it, right? It's uh, yeah, Each module is only a big, right? And it's like walking the length of a bus in order to get off or get on. So sure. it's not a, once the doors open up, there's no complexity to moving between the modules. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem, but that's a requirement. That's right. So on a related note to that last question, at least in phase one of, of this project, uh, you envision that there will be something like two redistributions of passengers for a, for a typical passenger on their trip? And there could many, be, uh, in, uh, but in phase one it may be that you have just two modules connecting and it's say San Jose or it's say Saratoga or whatever to simplify the logistics of you know people moving internally until you get the right kind of levels of adoption, right? If the, as adoption increases, now you have to solve for all this, okay, make sure everyone who is going to Saratoga moves to the module of relevance, right? But initially, at low volumes, you would say uh, two of these modules are going to Saratoga, two are going to Santa Clara, et cetera. You can accrete in that way initially. In phase one, we're also thinking that we will have driver-based modules uh, rather than driverless modules. And that has to do much more with regulation, you know, society acceptance, and those kinds of things. We do not see that as a technology problem. 
we certainly anticipate that in time, autonomous vehicles are going to be far safer than human-driven vehicles. And, you know, but certainly we need society, a societal acceptance of that. So every module will have a steering wheel and driver? In the Not vehicle? steering wheel, but drive-by-wire. Right? So, so how, how does he exit? Like, somebody, like in the same example, people are going to towards Northbound, and somebody wants to get stuck, get off of or sign away for the so the last module will be detached and they will have to steer out, right? So, in, in if the driver-driven uh, um, version of it, every module has a driver. So that's what I was right. asking. Yeah. So, uh, but certainly the central segment can have a single driver for multiple modules. But as you detach, you would have the local modular, you know, ring pick up the people that are going to be taken locally. Oh, I have to get up and get in another module. Yes. Maybe, okay. but uh, ideally, in, in that driver-driven case, the driver would be there. Okay. So drivers come with the module, or are they passengers? <laughs> you ask a diff different kind of question, right? Who takes the risk of driving people around? So. No, I mean, if you Take one of these things. Do you have a driver or does it come with a driver like a box? That's, that's so it, it has to do with the phasing of this issue, right? Uh, uh, what I'm saying is, if you put your mind to five years hence, there are no drivers. The modules are autonomous. But societal acceptance of that is not yet there, and regulation is not yet there, right? We are just now talking about autonomous driving for owner driven cars. Where whose responsibility it is? Is it Tesla's? Is it the insurance company will accept your, uh, you know, ability to let the car go on itself, or will society accept the damage, right? So those are unresolved issues. We are, when you're talking about accretion of this, multiple modules coming together like a transit system, does the transit system take the risk, right? So we don't, we have not, as a society, we have not solved for these issues. Emmanuel and I were, uh, are part of uh, the smart city initiatives. So we were at San Francisco, uh, you know, uh, earlier this week. And they're talking about redefining the complete transit system for San Francisco, as is Austin, as is Pittsburgh, and so on. Now, these solutions are all advocating for comprehensive change of government regulation and, uh, you know, change of mass transit systems. We are not there yet, right? We are changing, as, you, uh, as we speak, we are changing the wheels of the plane, you know, uh, engine of the plane as we are flying in terms of transit, but we are not there. It's more regulatory than uh, and acceptance than it is technology.